Um, next up, we'd like to welcome Jan. Jan's the COO of Lewis Silkin, and uh, I'll hand straight. Just that one there. Okay. Hand straight over to you. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Jan DeSers, I'm COO of Lewis Silkin. Um, we are a 350 user law firm in London, Cardiff, um, Oxford, and Hong Kong. It almost sounds like Dell's independent traders, doesn't it? <laughs> um, Paul actually just covered everything I was going to cover, but I'll carry on. I'll try that one first. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, I mean, it's actually true that um, it has been a painless experience, which is probably why I'm standing here talking to you. Um, we um, went from on-site to off-site in 365 days. Um, we're live at the Ark in Farnborough. It was the week before the 1st of April, which was in our contract. The contract's at the 31st of March. And we are replicating back to our um, data centre in Chancery Lane, and I'll tell you more about that later. Um, so, what happened on April Fool's Day last year, apart from my two April Fool's jokes? Do you want to know what they were? Because they're really, really good, but I was shot down with things. So the first one was, I texted my two 20-year-old um, children, the children in their 20s, and I told them that they were going to have a new brother or sister. <laughs> and the second one was, I emailed the whole firm, as is customary, this is what I do every April 1st, I didn't do it this year, I couldn't bear it, to say, we've got voice-activated printing, and two litigators were seen shouting at printers, print, where, did you, where are you supposed to shout into? So I had a, a lovely morning, it all went really well. And then... Kingsway melted. That happened on the 1st of April. Um, it was horrific. You, you may have read about it in the papers, but we um, actually were one of many, many businesses affected. You heard about restaurants closing down, buildings closing down. Um, the other law firm that was affected, Farrah's, was their server room actually started to melt. We were right on the edge of it. We were just here where the X is, on the, the edge of the black bit. And we didn't know when the power was going to come up. They were sending around generators. They told us that um, it was going to be the next hour. There was no way to get in touch. The lawyers were standing there shouting because there was no power. Um, our UPS has kicked in, so we decided after an hour, our UPS has only last so long, to take the servers down nicely. We have over 300 servers. Um, and then we were worried about the cooling units because obviously there's no cooling. And we thought, right, what are we going to do? So we just shut the whole building down, said, everybody go home. And they could get emails because we have this system called Mimecast, but it was awkward. Nobody had read their instructions on how to log on if they didn't have Active Directory present. We had a way of um, saving documents if you could pre-plan it, but of course they hadn't pre-planned it, so they had deals going on. I had other law firms who were doing urgent scanning and photocopying from the other road, and it was just absolutely horrific. The IT stayed there in the hope that the, all of us stayed there in the hope that the power would come out overnight and um, nothing was happening. We started to use Facebook, all sorts of other stuff. I mean, I could tell you about it. But it was probably one of the worst incidents of my life because you couldn't control it. I mean, you didn't know when the power was going to come back up. Oh, one lawyer said, next time we have a power cut, could you let me know in advance so I can see? <laughs> They're fabulous, the lawyers. So, we went from on-site to off-site in under a year. And that includes decision on which vendors to ask to quote. That alone was hilarious, because when you think about it, you could all probably name off the top of your head without Googling 10, okay? And so, um, I asked my friends in the, in the legal community, as Exponentially have found out, we all tell each other everything. And um, Clive's here, you know that we do that. If somebody does wrong, we tell. So we'd all, we all spoke to each other. I emailed all my friends, have you outsourced what's happened? And uh, I came up with about 30 or 40 organizations, and there's no way I can deal with that. So um, we asked two large ones, which I won't name, one of whom declined to quote because it was too difficult, because it was my ITT. I, I told, you know, it was a 40 page ITT with, a, with a, a legal agreement attached. One of them said, We only sign our own paper. So those two large ones dropped out. Um, we asked, we found two of the mainstream ones that all my friends said were pretty good. Um, Exponentially was one of them, and I'm not going to tell you who the other one was. And we asked our incumbents who've been doing our online backups for the last 10 years to quote. We knew that they probably wouldn't win, but they said um, that they would quote anyway. And what they were saying, um, 
What they did is they gave it to another organisation because they said that they would have a better chance. And I said, well, that's not really very fair that you're doing that, so we can't accept that one. So we were down to two vendors now, which was perfect. So the ITT that I produced, um, I Googled it, downloaded it, merged some stuff I found on our system, and then I had to run it by the risk committee because in a law firm we're really worried about risk. We're really worried if, if our data got out, we would lose our clients. Um, I had to run it across the management board, all of whom are spending their own money because in a partnership, we have 60 partners and all of them, it's the, the profits divvied up between them at the end of the year. And although exponentially is very reasonable, thank you very much, it's a considerable cost to the firm, which they didn't have to pay before. But their minds were awakened after the disastrous burn, so they were quite happy to consider it. And then HR, because of course you have to consider your people. Because it wasn't, we didn't in the end tube our people out, but you, you, you may need to tube your people out, so it's quite important that when you're starting these talks, you, you're aware of how your people may feel. You don't want a mass exodus while you're still on site. So, then we got, I got our lawyers to draft a managed services agreement, and this is no plug for Lewis Silken at all, but if you do go ahead with this, you do need a law firm to negotiate for you and Lewis <laughs> It's fabulous. We've got a great IT team who are used to negotiating with exponentially. You love us, don't you? Yeah. You do, actually, right? compared to some others they're negotiating with. Yeah. So this managed services agreement, when you're in a law firm, it's really hard, because the partners who are negotiating are reporting to the partners who have bigger stakeholdings in the firm and these people are really really worried that they're going to miss a clause something will go wrong and we're going to get sued and they're going to go oi fred you did this and this is why the where the issues start with the, with the lawyers so you've got to get this services agreement right i hope you did some sort of legal stuff paul and kept the lawyers in business good we like that nice <laughs> pay our nice salaries at the end of the month. <laughs> so the vendor selection process was easy as i said we had to, we had two left Actually, I was quite happy about that. And, okay, so the reason E won was because um, they, the other people were really, really great, really professional. They won because they own their own data network, okay? But the other reason, if you want to tell the truth, is I thought, I've got to work with these people for three years. And I know... <laughs> It might be a bit girly, but I go with my gut instinct. I really like these guys. I could work with them. They weren't patronising when they were talking to my guys. They came in, they chatted, and I'm like, yeah, but what if we've forgotten about this? Well, and we discussed stuff. I liked working with these guys. So that, that, I think that's quite important. And then we came to the negotiation, the service agreement that we'd already agreed with the ITT, and that took um, two months. But... That's probably half our fault because our lawyers have a lot of work that they have to do and my time is non-chargeable, I'm kind of free. Uh, but secondly, you know, they're talking about their own data now and, and so exponentially were quite wary that they had to safeguard themselves. I did say, didn't I, Jonathan, why don't you just sign it and let's be done with it? Yeah. <laughs> but your lawyer didn't feel the same, did no. they? I said, it was, because actually, when you get the contract out of the drawer, it's all over anyway, right? I just think it's over. The, you know, we, we're looking for an exit. And are you really going to fight a law firm? We're going to find an exit. So I just said, sign it. No, we're not having it. Anyway, so that took two months. We were supposed to sign on the 1st of November, but we didn't sign until the 31st of November. The signing of the agreement was the easy one. Jan de Sir's date, good, perfect, move on. Then we had to move on to the project plan and provision of office site space. This now came down to, I walked away and had lunch with my friends and stuff while they carried on with their project planning. They've got great project planning people. My people worked really well with them. And there was, a, what I liked the most was there was no covers up, cover ups. There's total transparency. Even the other day, I said, oh, what happened with E on that? And it wasn't anything major. I called and said, what's going on with this? And they immediately said, hands up. We didn't do that one yet, but that's what's scheduled. So I like the transparency. I prefer to know. And um, then they moved. They had to move 300 and plus, plus servers to the cloud. Most of ours were um, virtualized, of course, because it would have taken a lot longer. But our practice management system is just a nightmare. We actually managed to get that virtualized at the, was it the third or fourth go? But I was really worried ago, because I thought, what are we going to do if this doesn't work? Because that's what it all, you know, all our finances is like. Mm. So, replication back to Chancery Lane. So, 
If I'd have really pushed it, I probably could have got the lawyers to agree to replicate it somewhere else rather than back to Chancery Lane. But they were like, well, what if the links go down? Well, you know, Oxford and Cardiff and Hong Kong couldn't work either. If the links went down, you wouldn't have any internet access. But because we already have a server room built in Chancery Lane, we've already got that space provisioned, it, it would have been, it would have cost a fortune, actually, to reprovision that space as a lovely big room. I thought, <coughs> let's leave it back in Chancery Lane, and then we can say, well, if, if, the, if all the links get cut, then we can flick a switch. Um, and then we have this wonderful thing called Zerto, and that's the reason I first, when I first heard about Exponentially, and I came to a talk here, like you, and I heard about Zerto, which sounds like magic, but it really is magic. Um, uh, th that's what enables us to replicate back to Chancery Lane and to know we can get our servers back up and running if there's a power cut. They won't be able to log into Citrix, but I didn't even mention that to them. So the homework, is, of which there are a lot, won't work anyway. And also, we've only got seven more years less left on our lease. And I hear from the um, real estate lawyers that it's highly likely that we'll be made an offer on our building to be redeveloped before seven years. So let them have it there for seven years. And when we go to move offices, nobody's going to remember where the server room is. They don't even know where it is now. So we'll just probably stick it somewhere else and have another data center somewhere else. So this is the good news. <coughs> now I've, I've got two techies. And we didn't uh, cheapen them out because what they're doing is supporting the apps. In a law firm, we have loads and loads and loads of apps. My um, spreadsheet for maintenance on each of these specialist systems that lawyers use is that long. And um, we spend quite a lot on that. So our techies are a conduit between exponentially supporting the operating systems and the infrastructure. And the, um, they just support the, the applications they sit on and talk to the providers of these applications. So there's no overtime. I was paying a fortune overtime. Every third Saturday maintenance, staying late, doing stuff. Oh, we've got to patch this. We need an urgent thing on that. So it's actually, when I do my ROI, which I said I wasn't going to do to the partnership, in, when, when this has been done for a year, I'm going to actually show them what they've saved on overtime. So I'll just look great anyway. <laughs> so there is a, a click of a switch if both links fail, which they won't. Um, they can't do, they come in through completely different parts of the building. So let's, but even if it did, we're going to be testing that this weekend, I think, the click of the switch thing, how long it takes to come back to Chancery Lane. The, the best bit, E and the links. And so, E have got the break fix contract and all our stuff on Chancery Lane, which gives me one throat to choke. <laughs> Nobody else's problem, just E. So, P.S. What's going on with our outsourced data centre thing, Jan? This is what one of the partners said to me, sitting in the cafe having lunch. Haven't you done anything about that? I said, it's done. What? What you mean it's actually, I said, it's all gone, all off site, finished, done, nothing to worry about. And they said they hadn't even noticed. And that is what I wanted to achieve. So it's a success story. So thank you, E. Thank you very much.